guys, it's Gentry Stein. Welcome to episode number 17 of Learn to Yo-Yo. Today we're going to be learning a trick called Double or Nothing. Check it out. This is one of the most important tricks that we'll learn because it's the foundation to a ton of other tricks that we'll learn in this series. And if you can learn this one, it's really going to set you up for the rest of those tricks. If you guys are new to the series and want to pick up a yo-yo to practice with, I recommend the Yo-Yo Master Pack which you can get on my website, gentrystein.com. It'll be the first link in the description. It has everything you'll need to follow the whole series. So it's time for the trick. And before we get started, I wanna make sure that you guys have already learned the trapeze, which I taught in a previous episode. It looks just like this. And if you can remember, the yo-yo just swings right over our opposite pointer finger and lands on the string here. Now, the double or nothing is essentially the same thing, but the yo-yo is actually gonna swing around our fingers multiple times and then land on the string. So again, the whole thing looks like this. You can see it's just a mini trapeze right here, but the string is wrapped around our fingers twice. So the way we're gonna do that is the same way as the trapeze, but instead of landing on the string right here, we're gonna allow the yo-yo to keep swinging over and let the string continue to slide on our finger so the way to get here is to put your hands a little bit closer together so there's more string coming up from the yo-yo before your finger's touching it. So as I said before, when we're doing the trapeze, you want to have just a small amount of string here. So when you're swinging the yo-yo over, you let that string slide to land on the string here. But with double or nothing, you want to stop sliding right about here so that way the yo-yo can swing all the way over and you still have more space here for the yo-yo to continue swinging. From that point, we have to adjust our fingers again a little bit to make sure we have enough string for the yo-yo to go all the way over our opposite pointer finger again. It's gonna land on what looks like just a mini trapeze right here with the strings wrapped around. Now this is of course gonna be a lot more difficult than the trapeze. So again, I'm gonna recommend just practicing it without the yo-yo spinning so we can kind of get the feel for how much we need to let the string slide on our fingers in order to give the yo-yo enough room to swing all the way around twice. So get the yo-yo just chilling at the bottom of the string again, and then practice the same way as we did the trapeze, but instead, remember, of getting that string too short, we're gonna let it go all the way around our fingers. So try that a couple times, just getting it to go all the way around both fingers. From here, it's really gonna take that adjustment of figuring out how close to bring your fingers together. And you can see the strings are sliding on both my pointer fingers, and that's where you're gonna get the control to be able to tell how much string you need to be able to get it to flip over and land right here. So in the same way that we practice the trapeze swinging here with just one finger, we're going to do that same thing but with two. So we want to get the yo-yo swinging back and forth just by pulling our hands apart and bringing them closer together. So you can see the yo-yo is just chilling here, not moving at all. If I bring my fingers together, it lowers the yo-yo. And then if I bring my throw hand pointer finger over to the side, it causes it to swing a little bit like that. So that's what you want to get the feel for, is bringing your fingers together and then pulling your throw hand pointer finger to the side. And that's going to cause the yo-yo to start moving like this. So again, we put our fingers together, it lowers the yo-yo, and we move our throw hand pointer finger out, and it moves the yo-yo outward. And as we do that over and over again, it starts to make a circle, and the yo-yo starts to swing. Do it a little quicker, the yo-yo is going to swing. So that's how we're going to gain control and see exactly how much string we need to get the yo-yo to swing over and land. As you're doing this, watch where the yo-yo could go over your finger, and eventually try to hit your finger with the yo-yo like that. And once you can get the yo-yo to hit your finger, just give it a little bit more string and then the yo-yo is going to swing all the way over and if it's spinning, you'll be able to land it right on the string there. Now, as you're practicing that, you may find that if you get this motion going when the yo-yo is spinning here, you might find that when you try to land it on the string, you land on all the strings just like this and it kills the spin. Or you may find that it just lands on the back string, or maybe the two back strings. And what we want to do for double or nothing is actually get the yo-yo to land on the front string. So from this angle, it's gonna look just like this, right? So you can see I get the swing going. It's gonna look just like this on that front string. And the reason it's hard to land on that front string is because you're dealing with three strings now. So really what you wanna do is know exactly where the strings are on your fingers. That way you can manipulate them in a way that's gonna allow you to spread them apart and then land on the one that you want to. So when you're swinging the yo-yo over like this, 
if you just point your opposite pointer finger up just a little bit, that's going to help the string slide back to the back of your finger. Same thing with this side, right? So we point our fingers up just a little bit. You can see that's about the angle that I'm pointing them up at. And when I do that, you can see the string slides right to the back. And as the yo-yo is going over my throw hand finger, I just want to let the string slide to the back a little bit. And what that's going to do is effectively put the string on the back of both of our fingers and then allow us to, as we're doing this last step, catch the string at the tip of our finger on our opposite pointer finger. So just like that. And then you can see I can easily land on that front string. And I said easily, but it won't be easy. This one does take a lot of practice, guys. So just try to get all of those steps down. And if you can't get it with the yo-yo spinning, remember, just practice it without it spinning first to get this motion down. But if you guys can get to this point, you'll eventually be able to keep swinging over and you'll be able to commit to it and land on double or nothing just like that. A lot of people want to tend to just throw right into the double or nothing like this, but that makes it a lot more difficult. And you might get lucky once in a while doing that. But again, if you just break it down into steps and get the swing going and get the technique down to where you understand it, then it's going to make learning the trick a lot easier. And once you actually can land it, you'll be a lot more consistent with it. Once you've landed the yo-yo on the string, what you want to do to finish the trick is just swing the yo-yo back off your pointer finger and then drop all the strings and pull it back to your hand. Now, if you guys learn the double or nothing, here's a quick variation you can do that'll also be used in a bunch of other tricks. This time what we're gonna do is actually swing the yo-yo around our thumb first on our opposite side. So instead of swinging it around our pointer finger on our opposite side, we're gonna swing it around our thumb on our opposite side. And then just carry the trick on the same way that we were doing it before. This time it landed on the pointer finger. And as you can see, it puts us in something very similar, but this time the strings around our thumb that gives us the ability to move this string around. Maybe we can drop that string, and it's really gonna be used in a lot of other tricks, like I said. So it's important that you learn both of these. Um, the technique for this is exactly the same as the double or nothing. And that's gonna wrap up this episode of Learn to Yo-Yo, guys. If that trick looked a little bit too advanced for you, I recommend starting with the beginning of the series on episode one. I'll link that right above here. And if you start with that one, you'll be on the right track to getting all of these tricks down. And with that, guys, I'll see you in the next episode of Learn to Yo-Yo.